Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You know, we, we left off right before Christmas. Paul was hanging out in Corneth, and um, he can't quite move yet because the Apostle Paul, uh, in all likelihood, now you understand when we say some of the things, you're going to find schools of different dissenting thought. You know, people who, you know, people who study and you go, so you don't, ha you don't have a, you don't have a 100% consensus on any of these things. And we're talking 2,000 years ago, and we're talking based on evidence from wherever and whenever. And so the bottom line is, the, these are, these are suppositions that are, that are probably accurate, but we, we, you couldn't go to the bank on them for sure, 100%. Um, and, and they're quite frankly, it, whether Paul wrote it in 54 or 55 or 56 doesn't really matter. All right? I mean, it, we know he wrote it around sometime in that time frame. So we, we, we're using the dates that we have uh, based on, so we, it's believed by a large majority that Paul wrote this at Corinth after he wrote Romans and so while he was in that particular state. Some of us have him actually writing a couple years earlier. You know, you may go get somebody's study guide, and it has different dates. You know, again, uh, we're, we're not trying to be crazy, okay? We, we, we kind of have an idea. We, we think these are, these are probably fairly close. Yet, on the other hand, we cannot for, for absolute certain say, yes, this is the way it was. So, uh, again, somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 57, uh, both Romans and Corinth, uh, Galatians were written here. And... Um, and on his, his uh, oh, I think this is his third missionary trip. And, uh, and after this, we will then move into the imprisonment epistles. Now, we will probably go ahead and finish reading out the book of Acts and where Paul was and so forth. But after, after here, we get into the prison epistles. All right? So that will probably be sometime in February, early March. All righty. Let's go ahead and get into the first chapter of the book of Galatians. Paul wrote to the church. Of Galatia, or actually in the uh, the churches of the region of Galatia, not 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 really as much um, the city. It's not a city, but it's a region um, that Paul wrote this letter to, and and so it, it covers uh, kind of the northeast of Antioch and Iconium and Derby. That that region in there, that's that's the region of Galatia. So all the churches in that region, Paul wrote this as a circular letter to the churches in the region of Galatia. All right. And uh, so, we're, you know, this is, this is, again, a circular letter. It's not a, um, it is not a specific letter like Church of Rome or to the Corinthians. This is written to a region or circular. And so, uh, and, and Paul deals with some things. And one of the things Paul deals with is, is, is uh, not being taken back under the law. Also, this, this book is used by the crazy gracers to, you know, to say things that, that, that's just not Bible. And so we'll, we, as we come across those things, we'll try to deal with them without getting too hung up on, I don't want to get hung up on nutcases. All right. Paul, an apostle of men, of God, not of men. I'm mean, sorry, Paul, apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are unto me, or with me, unto the churches of Galatia. Again, all those that were with him, he's sending greetings. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Who hath given himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Now, Paul's saying here, you know, that, that Jesus gave himself that he might deliver, deliver us from this present evil world. God doesn't want you suffering under the dictates and demands of the fallen world. The, pre the, the present evil world, we've been delivered from its authority. Okay, so Paul writes and says that Jesus gave himself that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Not only are you going to get to you know, enjoy heaven, but he, during life on earth you get to have the days of heaven on the earth. Amen? Amen? And this is according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So Paul's opening, he says here, this, you know, he, he establishes the one, his apostleship. It was, didn't come from man, it came from God. Hallelujah. Um, that, you know, he's, he's got brethren with him, and they're writing this to the churches. He extends grace be to them, peace from God the Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Uh, and then let's the understand, God wants us to walk in his grace. Thank God for the grace of God. As we sit here, I, 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 I am going to get Guy Dunnick over here and have Guy Dunnick do a grace seminar. Guy has got some of the best teaching on grace that, I, that I've ever read or heard behind. His revelation concerning the subject of grace is very balanced. Uh, him and, and another, the other person that I would say has, 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 has a tremendous amount of revelation is Tony Cook. Those two, those two men have a revelation concerning the subject of grace um, that's just amazing. And, and the guy has some takes on some things that are just amazing um, about how that grace can mean strengthening or, or, you know, you can strengthen grace, empowering grace, ministry grace, and not just undeserved, unmerited favor grace, which is where everybody wants to limit it to. Okay? And uh, we're just going to have to get him over here. I mean, I've already talked to him. He'll come. It just has to be, you know, the right time. Can't be April the 16th or the 17th. Because she kind of glory be with us. Amen. Now, listen to this. So, so, to be, you know, so Paul comes and he gives his introduction to him. Be glory forever and ever and ever. And then he starts in. Love Paul. How you doing? Love you. Praise God. Grace be unto you. Now. Because Paul's got something on his He's got something he's got to deal with. He's going to deal with it. All right? So he goes five verses, and then he jumps in feet first. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that calls you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, we know, and, and I'm just going, you know, we had to kind of let the cat out of the back here. We know that Judaizers entered into the churches in the region of Galatia. And Judaizers were Jews who become Christians who still demanded we live, that people live according to the law. You had to be circumcised. You had to do everything according to the law. You just had Jesus as your Messiah, but you still did. You still fulfilled and lived according to the law. Every, you know, and remember in one place, Peter was so caught up with their dissimulation that he withdrew himself when, when, when Jews came so that he wouldn't be eaten with the Gentiles. And Paul withstood him to the face because he, he, you know, he was to be blamed. Remember that? Okay, and this is what we're talking about. We're talking now, so you understand what are the circumstances surrounding the writing of a book? There are Judaizers who've entered in trying to bring a group of Christians back under the Jewish law in order to work out their salvation or live out their salvation. And this is where people take these scriptures and start applying them to anything in the Bible of do this or don't do that. You're to live this way. You're to walk that way. You have commandments from the Lord, yada, yada, yada. They take what Paul wrote in response to people trying to force people back under the law in order to be a Christian or to be saved. They were demanding people be circumcised. Okay? And, and, and they were demanding them to live according to the Old Testament law. Had to do all the ceremonial washings and everything. They were referred to as Judaizers. And so Paul writes and says, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called, uh, called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What's the other gospel? We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. We did not have to be circumcised to be saved. You didn't have to go get your, your, your calf sacrifice to be saved. You are saved and saved alone through faith in Jesus Christ. That is the gospel of grace. It, the gospel of grace is not that once you're saved, you can do anything you want to, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Paul says, you know, you're, you're removed from him that calls you in the, gospel, the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Again, perverting it into doing the Old Testament stuff, or you're not saved. It's like, you know, coming along and saying, you know, have you been baptized in the name of Jesus only? Well, no, then you're not saved. Now, I got saved because I confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and believed in my heart God raised you from the dead. I was saved. I was water baptized as an outward testimony of the inward work. The outward testimony didn't save me. The inward work did through faith in Jesus Christ. But I am to follow that with the testimony by being baptized in one, but it's not what saved me. They're coming along and saying, you know, you might, be, you might have confessed Jesus as Lord, but you've got to be circumcised. Now, in one place, Paul gets pretty doggone blunt about that. And when we get to that place, I'm not, I can't remember exactly where it is, but when we get to it, it I mean, he just, I mean, he's blunt. People, people think, you know, Paul was real sweet. He said it in a way, he said something in a way you just kind of go, hmm. All right. 
as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach, I'm sorry, I didn't read this, but though we, verse 8, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than, we, than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So if, I, so if we preach Jesus Christ, you're, you're saved through faith in Jesus Christ, and then come back and say, no, you're not saved because you didn't go and offer your sacrificial lamb, your trespass offering or your sin offering or, or your wave offering or whatever to the priest. You're not saved. That's a different gospel. Or because you haven't been circumcised, you're not saved. That's a different gospel. Okay? As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach another gospel to them that you've received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do you I seek to please men? For if I, if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I, now, now remember now, Paul's preached, or Paul's written, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, and Romans by now. Possibly Romans by now. We, can't, we don't know for sure if Romans or Galatians got written first. But we do know he wrote 1st and 2nd Thessalonians and 1st and 2nd Corinthians. There's a lot he said in those things. Yeah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God. He who knew no sin was made sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen? Glory to God. And all the things he wrote to the church at Corinth. This is doctrine Paul's written to the church, the church at Thessalonica. He read all the things we've written. We, you know, we covered those books. We've covered all four of those books. It took us a long time. Hallelujah. I finally got through Romans. But Paul say, I've, I've preached. Here's my message. You know what my message is. And it's grace. And then Paul made it clear in Romans. He said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God's raised from the dead, you'll be saved. So Paul's doctrine is the doctrine of receiving through faith in the work of Jesus Christ, confessing his lordship, and believing that he is raised from the dead. That he is not only, he's not a martyr for the church, he's the resurrected Lord of the church. That he does live. And that our faith is in the living Christ. And that we confess his lordship and receive his salvation. That is how we got saved. And if you teach anybody else, they got to get saved. Some other way, you're accursed. It's a different gospel. It's not. Now see, coming along and saying after you're saved. Because Paul also wrote when he wrote to the church at Ephesus later. In the imprisoned epistles. That we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. <coughs> that I don't do, I don't do anything. You're, mis you're misapplying doctrine. And tr is, is this fresh? Does anybody know? Oh, thank you. I didn't want to drink amoebas. <laughs> it's also written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Zing from the pastor. Cat was quoting the devil. I was quoting Jesus. Which one thinks better? No, he's quoting some of his crazy roommates. Or Cat probably has roommate stories from Rama. If Jesse and Shannon have roommate stories, they can't tell them because they're sisters. And they're on each other. You had neighbor stories. Now, the... The, the first year neighbors, the second year neighbors were good. We love the second year neighbors. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Um, Paul says, I certify you that the gospel which was, was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that does not mean um, that you can't be taught by men by the unction of the Spirit. But Paul said, I didn't receive this man. Some man didn't come up and tell me this. I got it by a revelation of Jesus Christ. What is referred to, Paul's writings is referred to as the Pauline revelation. Who we are, what we have, and where we're pos positioned in Christ. Now remember, Paul was a new man about 14 years ago, whether in this body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Such a one was caught up into the third heaven and heard things unlawful to be uttered. What was he, what, what, when did he utter them? It took him the rest of his life to write it out. And he shared, he saw in heaven what he could not articulate and took him writing doctrine out over the, over the rest of his life to bring that revelation of what we are in Christ to the Pauline revelation. Amen? Hallelujah. For you heard, in my, uh, heard of my life, shallow conversation, 
time passed in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church and wasted it. In other words, he said, I was very zealous after the Old Testament law. And profited in the Jews' religion above my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal. Now listen, we are called by his grace. Whatever you're called to is by the grace of God. There's an empowerment and there's a calling to do whatever it is you do in the body of Christ. Doesn't necessarily mean you're in the pulpit ministry, but you're still a ministry. You have a ministry in the body of Christ. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither I went up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. I went into Arabia and returned again into Mas to Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and obey with him 15 days. And he's kind of given a timeline of what happened with him here. Then after three, uh, I'm sorry, but, uh, the other, but other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother, which was eventually killed by Herod. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Now Paul is, is confirming his apostolic authority of what he teaches. Afterwards I came into the region of Syria, Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. In other words, he didn't go up around and go, uh, go into Judea and, and try to, you know, get a preaching place and get a circuit there. He went somewhere else. And remember, he writes and talks about when he wrote to the church at Rome, you, remember, you should remember this, that he said, under no, no other man's foundation have I built, but I have longed to see you and to come and, and, and share something with the church at Rome. Because he would not build on another man's foundation. He built on the foundation himself of what God gave him and built things up from the ground. He didn't come in and try to t hijack somebody else's work. Thank God. Paul had integrity. Are you here? You go home. Well, I guess y'all went home. And they glorified God in me. Then verse chapter 2. Then 14 years ago I went again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. In other words, he went along and met with the church leaders. And said, here's what I'm preaching. You know, I've been out here, I've been out here, you know, about 14 years I've been out here preaching. I've been, this is what I'm doing. Here's what I've done. Here's what I say. Here's what I preach. And I'm presenting it to you guys just to let you know what I'm doing and make sure I'm not running in vain. Okay? And of course he wasn't. Um, praise the Lord. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And here we get to this. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in priv privily to spout our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that he might bring us into bondage. And here's the whole thing. Paul is dealing with Judaizers, and they're trying, he's coming in and saying, hey, look, guys, I'm preaching that you're saved by faith in Jesus Christ alone. But these guys are coming in trying to compel us to be circumcised. I got this Greek with me. He's not compelled to be circumcised. And I've preached your faith that your salvation is in Christ alone. But these guys are coming in and trying to compel, you know, and, and, and try to push them in to have make sure that Titus is circumcised or anybody else that Paul had with him was circumcised. And this is, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for one hour or not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, now in other words, the, the people who seem to be in charge or whatever, whosoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. In other words, he's saying that they, they recognized that he was walking in an authority to the Gentiles just like Peter was walking in an authority to the Jews. And if you think about that in the natural, that's the most illogical two to be called to where they were called. If anybody <clears throat> was qualified to minister to a bunch of rough, ruffian heathens, Peter was. And if anybody was qualified to preach to a bunch of educated, uppity, you know, knowers of the law, Paul was. But God called each of them to the opposite place. Why? That they would not stand in their power and their experiences. They would, they would be used of God to minister to people by the anointing. 
And when James, Cephas, that is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived that the grace was given unto us, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, and that we should go to the heathen, and they should go into the circumcision only, in other words, they, with, one, with one stipulation, that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Now, here, Paul, stop here. Paul is saying, listen, they told that the only thing, only stipulation they put on our ministry was remember the poor. And we were already had a propensity or given to doing that. Amen. And so, uh, you know, they, they, they shared. They, they heard what Paul was preaching. There was, no, there was nothing they could say that they, they were contrary to. As a matter of fact, they couldn't even add anything to it. They said, go ahead. The only thing we, want, the only thing we ask of you is don't forget the poor folks. And Paul said we were already, you know, and we were already forward or had a propensity or uh, set aside that. But look here now. Verse 11, when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Because he was to be blamed. For before, that is before, you know, they, they met, certain came from James who did eat with the Gentiles. But when, he was come, when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing uh, them which were the circumcision. And, the other, so, and, and then when the other Jews dissimilate, uh, dissembled, likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Paul went happy with Barnabas, his traveling companion. But when they saw that I walked not uprightly, uh, but when I saw, I'm sorry, when I, when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, what was the truth? They withdrew from the Gentiles because they were afraid of the Judaizers, those who demanded to, see, they weren't supposed to be around Gentiles. But see, before they came, they were sitting in fellowship and eating because they were Christian brothers. But they were afraid of the Judaizers' uh, conversation, talk, uh, whatever. And so when they showed, they left and withdrew themselves, and Barnabas got caught up in it. I oh, better not be in here. Take Paul off. He says, he, I withstood him to the face. That's King Jimmy for, I got up in his grill. Okay? Hallelujah. Uh, because I saw they walked not right according to the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before, the, all, before all of them. He, he did this in the private. Why? Because what Peter done is in public. So you understand, so when things are done in public and they have a public effect, they have to be dealt with publicly. If I catch you in a sin privately, I deal with it privately with you as a brother. But what you're doing is public and people are seeing it and it's affecting people, then it has to be dealt with publicly. Now, in the right spirit. There's some guy on Facebook, I'm telling you, my God, I can't, I mean, it's like, sometimes some of the things he says are good or right, but the way he does it, he's going after this one, he's going after that one, and all, you know, America's under judgment because, because pe people still support that ministry or this ministry, and if you know this one, and you got a ministry, and you're not rebuking them, then you're, uh, you got the same spirit on you, and Bill knows who I'm talking about, probably. I mean, it's just like, uh, how many more pe times can you slam brother so-and-so? And sometimes the point you're making is good, but it's how you're handling that point that's wrong. Okay? In this case, Peter being a pillar and Paul being basically a pillar, he had to deal with him because of what he had done. People got caught up in it and, and, were, and were sending a message to the people in the church that there's more required of their salvation than what they had practiced or exercised because Peter and Barnabas got up and walked out when the Gentiles showed up. So y'all being a Jew, live after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews. Why compel the Gentiles to live after and do as the Jews? Who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that, and see this is why, knowing what? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law. Now understand, we, we've covered this and we've covered this and we've covered this, but the yin-yang bozos out there pick stuff up and just run off the deep end with it all the time. Just because I'm not under the law of I've got to go to Jerusalem and I've got to get this and this. There's still the moral code of God. There's still things in the New Testament that God says not to do. There are things in the New Testament God says that he requires you to do. And it doesn't mean because you're under grace you don't have to do, you don't have to do or you can get away with doing. If he tells you to do it, you've got to do it. If he tells you not to do it, you can't get away with doing it. 
Amen. Then you don't stop doing it to get saved. You get saved and you're empowered to stop doing it, which means you stop doing it. You don't have a past to continue to do it. Under the guise that God's grace allow, saved you, it doesn't matter. Save me. Some people say things like, it doesn't matter what I do, God's grace already saved me. It doesn't matter if I do this, this, this. It has no, no bearing on whether I'm saved or not because that's works. Well, if I'm creating Christ Jesus under good works and all the fruit of my life is the bad works, Jesus said you know them by their fruit. So I have to question what kind of salvation you got if all your works are contrary to good works. Blah, 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 blah. Well, go sound like a motorboat if you want to. Anyway. Paul says, For I am through the law and dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am, now listen, I am crucified with Christ. Here it is. Now listen, you got to take everything as a whole. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. Christ lives in me. And, the, and, and now, and which, and which and, I'm sorry, and the life I now live, is in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now stop there for a second. Stop there. But don't even read the next verse. Paul says, nevertheless I live, yet not I, Christ lives in me. Now the grace of God should be teaching, actually the grace of God teaches us to live righteously. But if the grace, Bill, am I messing up your lighting? Okay. If the grace of God is that Jesus Christ is now alive in us and I now live out of the life of him in me, then my lifestyle should be representative of the King of kings and the Lord of lords living through me. Amen. That grace was not given as a as a as a pass on living right. The grace of God was given as an empowerment to live right. To live a life of faith that honors the Father. Why? Because it's no longer I live, Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So there is an empowerment given to me. See, it's not enough to tell people, don't sin. Well, we know that. Don't sin, and here's how you don't sin. You let the greater one in you live through you. You submit actions to the one living in you. I, Lord, this is what I want to do. I submit it to you. You, you. you find out real quick. I say, you can find out real quick if you're supposed to be doing th certain things or not. Now, some things you don't even need to submit to them because you already know when you get ready to bring it up, it's wrong. Amen. Paul saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not resurrecting the law. I'm not telling people they got to you know, be circumcised. I'm not telling people they, gotta, they can't eat this meat. I'm not telling people that they got to go to the temple and offer this sacrifice. I'm not saying that you can't walk two and a half miles on the Sabbath day. I'm not saying that. Your, your salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ. But Paul says, but because I have faith in Jesus Christ, I know long, I, I, it's, I, I'm crucified with him and I do live. But really, I don't live. He is living in me. Talk about the grace of God taking de degenerated, rebellious humanity humanity coming and redeeming you by faith in Jesus Christ and then now putting a life in you that you don't live out of your ability you don't live out of your power you don't live out of what you got you live out of the greater one living in you and even in the flesh he empowers you to live in a way that honors the father that's grace I said that's grace how do they not I'm out and sleeping with every girl I can find and God don't care. That's not grace. That's rebellion. Hello? You can call it grace if you want to, but it ain't grace. Because the grace of God empowers you not to give in to your flesh. If you yield to that, if you, don't, if you reject it, it won't work. People come up with some of the craziest stuff. So, well, if you tell people not to sin, they're just going to sin anyhow. 
No, 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 no. I found out the people you're telling that there's no consequences for your sin are the ones sinning. There are all consequences for doing contrary to God. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now, this is what Paul says next. Let's read verse 20 again. I, through the law, am dead to the uh, law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified unto with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Next verse. I do not frustrate the grace of God for righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to live a life where I'm doing the Ten Commandments. Which I don't think anything's wrong with posting the Ten Commandments anywhere. People need a moral code. Yeah, they do. God has a moral code. But I'm not going to frustrate it by going back under Judaism and getting circumcised or, you know, getting, uh, you know, keeping the temple laws or all that kind of stuff. I, my, my life is a, is a life of faith in Jesus Christ and the concurring result of that faith in Jesus Christ is a life that honors and pleases the Father. I will have works that honor him because I'm living by the faith of the one who died for me and now, amen, and he loved me and he gave himself for me. He's now living in me. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God. I'm not going to go back under the Old Testament law, but neither am I going to live the way I did before I came to Christ. His grace is more powerful. The grace of God is more powerful than saying you get to go to heaven doing anything you want to do. Do you remember what Paul wrote um, in one place talking about the spirit of disobedience? And he said, for, for, this, for these reasons, the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience. Now somehow or another, we outlay the wrath of God doesn't exist anymore. Yet Paul wrote and said, the, the, for the, for, because of the spirit of disobedience, the wrath of God coming, cometh on them for these things. And he was warning them not to be doing them. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's in Colossians or where, but it's, it's in here. We'll get to it eventually at some point in time. <sighs> Chapter 3, verse 1. Favorite Bible verse out of the J.B. Phillips translation. King Jimmy dresses it up and says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently been set forth crucified among you. Sounds so pretty, doesn't it? J.B. Phillips' New Testament translation says this, Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. Love that. I've always loved that version on this. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. Now, Paul, after saying these things, comes back and says, Oh, dear, or, or, dear, or, dear idiots of Galatia. Who's bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Whose eyes Jesus Christ has been set, evidently set before you, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you're now only perfect by the flesh? Now, again, people will come along and take these out and kind of try to say, you know, if you tell Karen that she's not supposed to rob banks, you know, then that's, that's works of the flesh. Don't, you can't make handguns with your fingers anymore. That's illegal. The brainwashing bozos teaching our kids. Yeah. They're just, they're, listen, they're, they are, they're a bunch of communist brainwashers, is all they are, trying to make having a gun evil so that they can eventually overturn the Constitutional Constitution, Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment, Second Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment to the Constitution, so they can do away with it. Because they want the communists want to get the socialists, the Marxists, the Leninists want to take over this country, and they can't do it while we got our guns. Right. And if you kid gets sent home because he made a gun with his finger, you ought to be in every administrator's face you can yeah. be in. Get on every newspaper and get, get it out there. Yeah. Bandwagon. Karen made a gun with her finger. <laughs> in church. <laughs> you got boys? Get them machine gun toys. Yeah. Make lots of noise. <laughs> Give them fake hand grenades so they can blow up stuff. Let them be boys. Yeah. I did it as a kid. I'm not a mass murderer. Yeah. Hello? Well, listen, caps, caps, caps owns guns. If we didn't have a toy gun, we took sticks and made guns. We took rocks and threw them and blew stuff up. Amen. May let them be boys. Amen. Do not give them a Barbie doll. Amen. All right. 
But you know, I mean, we had somebody in our church at one time, they, they took a, a pocket knife to school or something. They got suspended. It was like a little kid. Got suspended and reprimanded and chewed out. Now, when I went to high school, everybody showed up with the shotguns and the rifles and the gun right with the dead deer. They drove up and said, I got an eight-pointer this morning. Left them out, took out the teachers, went out there and looked at them, looked at the gun they used and everything. You know, you have a couple, you have some incidences where if you'd had, if all the boys had had their shotguns when the crazies went to Columbine, those boys wouldn't have killed everybody. Because they would have gone out in their trucks and got their guns and killed them. You know that's right. Doing away with guns doesn't stop people from killing. It just gives people who, who don't obey the law an easier task of it. Right. Right. That's the, you know, you're being political. I'm being smart. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody was killed with a baseball bat recently. I think we ought to ban baseball. We ought to start the anti-baseball. We ought to ban baseball bats being made in America. Because it shouldn't be allowed to have a baseball bat. On oh, kitchen knives. Somebody killed somebody with kitchen knife. We, can't, we got banned knives. You can't have knives. Meat has to be pre-cut at the factory under direct governmental supervision. Because you can't have a knife at home because you, you might kill somebody with it. Hello? Next thing you know, you say, well, you kill, somebody took a car and ran over people. You can't have cars. I went all off the deep end there, didn't I? We'll pick up next week. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.